Hello everyone, welcome back to another Biomed Basics video. Today, I'm going to cover refrigeration systems, which should encompass most conventional air conditioning units, dehumidifiers, refrigerators, and freezers. Now, why would I cover refrigeration systems? As a Biomed, it's an essential part of your craft to understand the equipment which falls under your responsibility. From the planning of equipment purchases to the ordering of parts and documenting repairs correctly, Knowing proper terminology along with the functionality will save you money and time in the future. Let's take a look at the general refrigeration cycle. There's six major components to every refrigeration system. The refrigerant itself, the compressor, the condenser, a metering device, the evaporator, and lastly, all the tubing that connects these components. Let's start with the compressor. A compressor is like the heart of a refrigeration system. Simply enough, the compressor takes refrigerant vapor and compresses the gas back into a liquid. The now liquid refrigerant is at a high pressure, but it's also gained quite a bit of heat from the compression. Now it heads to the condenser to cool off a bit. The condenser is a radiator, like in your car. In between the condenser and the evaporator is a metering device, which separates the high pressure side from the low pressure side. Inside the metering device is a small opening that sprays a jet of liquid coolant towards the evaporator. If you've ever sprayed an aerosol can and felt the can get cold, you've witnessed this effect in person. In a refrigeration system, the spray is contained within a closed loop, but still needs to expand the rest of the liquid spray into a gas. That's the job of the evaporator. The evaporator is another radiator with enough coils to allow the liquid to evaporate fully into a gas. From there, the pump back uses the refrigerant vapor to start the cycle all over again. Refrigeration technology is constantly evolving with improvements in efficiency and noise reduction, although the overall refrigeration process has been around for well over 100 years. One area of constant improvement is the compressor. There's five main types of compressors. There's centrifugal compressors, which are usually found in central HVAC plants for large buildings like hospitals. These units accelerate particles along a curve, compressing them down to a single exit port. They use centrifugal force to compress the molecules. Centrifugal systems require a massive amount of electricity, but their overall efficiency is pretty good considering the amount of space they take versus the amount of BTUs they support. BTUs or British thermal units, are the standard unit of measure of heat. Since refrigeration units work by removing heat, they are therefore measured in BTUs. The higher the BTU count, the larger the refrigeration unit or heater will be. The next compressor type is the rotary screw. This is one of those evolutions in technology I noted earlier. Rotary screw compressors work by spinning a matched pair of helix screws at one end, the refrigerant is sucked in between the screws, and as they turn, the vapor gets more and more compressed as the volume between the screws gets smaller and smaller towards the exit. The rotary screw design is very efficient because it doesn't take very much space compared to some other designs, yet it can operate at a very high flow rate. The rotary vane is another type of compressor. Although it's an aging technology and it's found much less frequently than it used to. The rotary vane uses a flywheel with little veins that protrude from the wheel and they extend to contact the walls of an oval shaped chamber. The chamber is largest at the suction port and it tapers down compressing the vapor until it reaches the exit port. Next we have a reciprocating compressor. The reciprocating compressor resembles an internal combustion engine or an air compressor. There's a piston which moves up and down inside a cylinder while two valves control the inflow and the outflow of the refrigerant. Reciprocating compressors are the most common type of compressor found in air conditioners, refrigerators, and freezers because they're inexpensive to manufacture and they're quite reliable despite being noisy and generally inefficient. The last type of compressor is a newer design, the scroll compressor. The scroll compressor has two coils, one sits inside the other, these coils compress refrigerant by moving offset of one another 
sucking in vapor near the outermost opening of the coils and discharging the compressed vapor out the middle of the coils. This slight offset movement throughout the 360 degree rotation of the motor is very efficient and is reasonably quiet. There's a newer technology which isn't necessarily related to a specific compressor, but it's found on more expensive and energy efficient refrigeration systems, and it's called the inverter drive. Inverters are being found in the latest and greatest refrigeration systems because it allows the motor to adjust its run speed based on the needs of the system. Compressors driven by the inverter are three phase motors and the speed of these motors is adjusted by a control board. Compared to a standard refrigerator compressor which is either on 100% of the time or it's off. Inverter drives use less electricity, they create less noise than a standard compressor, and they reduce wear and tear on the infrastructure because they reduce the amount of startup electrical surge current. The compressor is one of two components that controls the pressure within a refrigeration system. The other is the refrigerant metering device. The metering device controls how much liquid is sprayed from the high pressure side to the low pressure side. There's four main types of metering devices. The thermal expansion valve or TXV, uses a sealed bulb of refrigerant in a long thin copper capillary tube. As the suction line to the compressor warms up, refrigerant in the bulb begins to boil and expands into a gas, which goes down the capillary tube and presses on a diaphragm. This opens the valve, which sprays some more liquid refrigerant down towards the evaporator, which expands and cools the bulb back off which in turn closes the valve on the metering device. The TXV is a simple, inexpensive, and reliable method of metering, which is why it's found in a majority of residential air conditioning systems. A newer technology is called the EXV, or electronic expansion valve, which solved most of the TXV's shortfalls. The EXV uses a tiny little motor to deliver a precise amount of refrigerant according to the demands of the system. The EXVs are becoming widely available in all types of refrigeration systems because they're the most efficient means of metering the refrigerant. Combining an EXV with an inverter drive compressor is going to create one of the most efficient refrigerator systems available, albeit at a cost. Next is the capillary tube meter. This is the simplest type of metering device because its flow is restricted by a simple capillary tube. The length and diameter of the tube creates the restriction naturally. This technology is generally getting replaced by another simple technology, the fixed orifice and piston meters. A fixed orifice is just as it sounds. It's a hole with a set size that determines the amount of flow from the high side to the low side. The piston variant allows for some self-regulation of the system pressure, but it's basically a fixed orifice as well. The fixed orifice is found in many of your refrigerators, freezers, and simple air conditioners. It's cheap and easy to manufacture, and its simplicity lends to its reliability. The last component of a refrigeration system is the refrigerant itself. Refrigerant is a material that turns to a liquid at a reasonably low pressure, and it boils off at a low temperature, which absorbs the heat as a byproduct of the process. The pressure and obtainable temperature of the refrigeration system is dependent on the refrigerant being used, and there's several types in use today. Modifying the refrigerant level within the system should only be done by a licensed professional. There you have it guys, the basics to refrigeration systems. I know it's a quick little video. I don't want to get into too much detail because as I said, it's a constant technology, it's constantly changing, and this video could date itself pretty quickly. I'd like to take the time to thank you for watching my videos and supporting this channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already so you'll be notified when I post another Better Biomed video. Thanks again.